for those of you who are just joining us, I'm holding my paper horizontally, so meaning left to right or side to side, and I have my drawing utensil. I'm going to use a marker, uh, but I highly suggest you use uh, a pencil as always. So here we go. So over here, uh, I figured we draw a wolf. Sorry, not a wolf. A fox. <laughs> a fox in a winter landscape. The reason why is because it's the season, and I don't think I've ever taught you guys how to draw a fox before. So I figured. Why not now? So let me just um, show you guys what's going to happen. Um, that's okay, Gabriel. I'm just talking about what we're doing right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the fox probably on one of the bottom corners. So I feel like I put my fox right over here, and then he'll be in a winter landscape. So let me show you guys where I'm going to put the nose, and then after I put the nose on, uh, I'll zoom in so you guys can see uh, up close what we're doing. So I'm going to put the nose right around here. It's an upside down triangle. And I'm going to color it black, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a space for white to symbolize that it's nice and shiny. So that's where my nose is. Notice how uh, small it is and where the position is on the paper relative to where it is. And with that said, I'm going to zoom in by putting this on a box. There we go. So now it's a little bit closer now. All right, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create curves going from the nose outwards. That's going to symbolize the inside of the head. So I'm going to go from here. I'm going to go really high up. And I'm going to curve out, just like so. I'm going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side. So up and out, just like that. OK? All right, next step. What I want to do is you're going to take those same lines that you just did, connect them on top together by creating a a nice upward arch. And if you want to kind of create a little zigzag on top for like a frizzle in the hair, you can. I'm just going to connect it smooth like this. Okay. And then you're going to add two ears, one ear on this side. So a nice puffy triangle over here. And then one on the other side, one puffy triangle right there. And then instead of doing triangles on the inside, I think it might look better if I just kind of make a line going outwards like this. And then go in the middle of that line and kind of make a line going downwards. So it kind of is still a triangle, but it gives the ear more of an interesting like shape. Go out, go in the middle of that line, and then connect back to the, to the head, just like so. Let's see if that makes a difference at all. All right, next step. I'm going to add the beady eyes. You can add any eyes you want. I think the eyes that I'm about to do might look best. But it's up to you. I'm going to add a little bit of a white section in the eyes to give it more of a highlight. So I'm leaving a little bit of the eye white, just like so. There we go. All right, next step, I'm going to connect the side of the heads to the nose. If you miss the nose and you kind of go underneath a little bit, that's fine. It doesn't have to completely connect to the nose like how I'm about to do. Either way, it still should look pretty nice and cute. All right, if you're still trying to catch up, I am going to be coloring the head a little bit just so it gives you guys more time to catch up if you're falling behind a little bit. So use this time to catch up while I color the fox a little bit just so we can take a a preview of what it should be looking like once we're done. So this should give you guys an idea of what the fox is going to look like if you do decide to color it later. All right, there we go. All right, let's got to do a couple more waves of orange here and there. All right, there we go. Perfect. All right, next step, I want to do the feet. So watch how I do it. I think I'm doing pretty good now. So I'm going to go from this side of the head. I'm going to go down, way down, curve back, and curve around. So that's going to be one of its feet. It might not make sense right now, but it'll make more sense once I'm done. You can add two vertical lines by the foot to symbolize the toes or to symbolize the line between the toes. 
And then from the top of that foot, just kind of create a vertical line going up about that much. All right, we are going to make a foot on the opposite side, very close to the other one that we just did. Almost touching. And then go up about that much. If you want to add the two vertical lines by the toes, you can do that right now. And then another vertical line above the whole entire foot, about the same height as the other one. All right, this next part uh, might look strange, but it'll make sense once we're done. It's gonna be its nice puffy tail. So I'm gonna go from over here, curve down, and then once I hit the foot, curve out like that. Okay. All right, here comes a nice confusing one, okay? So make sure you draw this light in pencil just in case if you get it wrong the first try, because it's gonna be a long line. I'm gonna go from this part of the tail, gonna curve all the way around, all the way up, back, and then basically towards the head. And stops right there. So if you mess up on that line, you can always fix it. It's a very big line, so let's be very careful. All right, we're going to add a couple more things so the fox makes more sense. So over here, right above where the tail is, let's make a letter C. The reason why we do that is so at least it makes sense of where the back foot is. So that's basically its back hind foot, kind of like, kind of like it's sitting. If you ever seen a dog or a cat sit, its back foot kind of makes that kind of shape. All right, and then this part over here is a little confusing as well between the feet because it doesn't look correct. So let's fix that right now. So what I'm gonna do between these two vertical lines that we did earlier, create a diagonal from here down to the foot and then from that line that we just did let's create a curve again and then go out that direction and then basically what you just drew was the um other back foot so it's kind of like in the far distance and if you want to draw a little horizontal line Connecting these two feet together, they'll make sense once we're starting to color. Okay, so while you guys are catching up on that, I'm going to go back with my orange and see if it makes sense. Um, I'm not going to color the feet orange because I want to make sure that kind of gives it like a white boot kind of type of look. Let's see if it works. I'm not going to color the bottom of its chest either because I want this, its stomach to be white. So let's see if this works or not. So I've been basically testing how to draw a fox this whole entire time for the past four classes. And so far, I think this is the best yet. So we'll see. All right, so let me just finish this back half of the body. I think I might want to leave the tip of the tail uh, white as well. Let's do a couple zigzags here and there. Let me see if it works. And I think it's looking pretty good. And there's one more part that needs to be orange, and it's this back foot right here, up to at least that point. All right, I think the fox is making sense now. I don't know about you guys, but that's what it looks like. Um, so while you guys are finishing that fox up, before we finish the picture, I can show you guys what we did the last class or past couple classes. So last fifth grade class, um, we made our fox look very similar. I think very similar, hold on. Yeah, just uh, the tail's facing the opposite direction. That's the fox from last class. Uh, when I taught this to fourth grade today, um, we made the tail going behind instead. 
so the tail's behind the whole body and you can see the whole hind foot instead. And then for the first fourth grade class, um, this is the first time I did the fox, and they, we kind of just made the whole tail cover the whole entire front half of the body. So it was a learning experience. So I went from this to this to this. I think I got it right with you guys. So there we go. All right, let me zoom out a little bit by removing a set of boxes from underneath. There we go. So now you guys can kind of see how big it is on my paper. Because as you can see from the other ones, uh, we did add a background. And I think I'm going to switch to pencil because there's some parts that I want to erase later. So let's do the mound of snow we're sitting on first. There we go. Maybe I'll do another mound really close up. Maybe one mound right here. Mound of snow right there. And then finally, the horizon line in the back. Horizon line is basically where the land meets the sky in a photo or picture. There we go. And I'm glad I did pencil because now I can do the tree trunks. So I'm going to do one tree trunk on the very first snow mound right here. And it has to be nice and thick because it's the closest tree to us. The next mound is probably right here. So the tree trunk is going to be a little bit skinnier. And then finally, these tree trunks in the way back shall be probably the skinniest because it's the furthest away. And you guys should probably remember this from when we did uh, snowy birch trees in fourth grade. So very similar. All right, let me just take my eraser and I can erase parts that intersects. So I can erase this part, I can erase this part. And I can race over here. All right, so I'm going to go speed up a tad bit. So I apologize if I'm going to go a little fast, but I want to make sure that I finish this on time. So I'm tracing over the trees first. Here we go. And then I'm going to switch real quick to a gray marker. I'm not sure if you guys remember this, but we did do this with, I think we did this with dry, dry Sharpies or Sharpies that were about to go bad. Um, I'm pretty sure we did this. This for the art show, I think, from last year. You guys remember? There you go. Has a nice look to it. So if you have a marker that's almost dead, this might work better for you. It gives it a better look than mine. All right, there we go. Nice. All right, now I can add the ground. So let me just trace the snow mounds here. Looking real good. And finally, I can start adding some shadow. Let's see. Let me add, I think I'm going to put the light source right above the fox. So I'm going to make sure that the shadows are going away from this section right here. That means the shadows go in this direction and behind the tree. And by the way, it's 129. So it is almost time to go. So if you want to share your artwork, you can hold up to the camera so we can all see it. So if you want to share, you can. Otherwise, you don't have to. Oh, looking good, guys. Good work. All right, well, I'm going to keep going. And it's OK, Gabriel. You don't have to share if you can't. And I think that's it. I think we're done. I'm going to keep going. There's so much more stuff I still want to do. I still want to color my sky and stuff. But we're out of time. All right. That's it, guys. I'll see you guys next time. If you guys want to stick around, you can. But I got to get going. All right. Bye, everybody.